Hi, my name's Anthony and welcome to the exhibition of Nick Veazey here at Clarendon Fine Arts. Well, thank you so much for joining me here today, Nick. Um, I've just been having a look around the exhibition. It looks incredible. The first thing I thought about when I first saw these works is just how unique they are. I mean, your use of x-ray is something that I've never seen before, so I've got to ask, where did it all begin? So um, I've always been into photography since I was a kid and um, particularly experimental photography and then I was just really lucky, X-ray found me. I was asked to take an X-ray of a, of a soda can for um, a TV show. My wife was the designer, or girlfriend at the time now, wife was the designer for an irreverent TV show back in the day called The Big Breakfast. The Big Breakfast, yeah. okay. And yeah. she needed um, an X-ray of a Coke can because a certain cola company were running a promotion where the ring pull on the can is worth hundred thousand pounds. So they wanted okay. to say, how can we find out where the magic can is with the ring pull with the magic letter on it? She couldn't find anyone to take an x-ray. She asked all her regu uh, regular photographers and videographers how to do it. Okay. We were talking about it over dinner. So I said, tell your boss, I'll do it. Obviously once you sort of develop this passion, I guess you sort of found it and you say it just came to you. How did you build on that? It, it's really hard to um, get access to the equipment and initially I was told it was impossible. But I can be quite tenacious and I really wanted to do it. Um, so I went on courses about the safety issues of radiation, got a license to operate the equipment. And then to start with, I hired the uh, equipment because it's extremely expensive and dangerous and sort of taught myself really. Presumably it requires a sort of specialist setup to sort of get into x-ray. Well you kindly described my work as unique so I had to sort of teach myself because I'm not very true. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm traveling a path that hasn't really been traveled that way before but I am using the same equipment as radiographers and hospitals and also radiographers who do industrial x-rays. And so in order to sort of continue experimenting you've built this sort of concrete bunker haven't you to work out of? Yeah you know radiation is dangerous stuff so um, I track the radiation um, inside a specialist building that's designed to do exactly that. So you can use three things to stop radiation, sand, concrete and lead, and I've got a concrete one. Safety is paramount with what I'm doing, so um, I've got a 600mm thick concrete walls in my studio, it's so about 5 metres square, um, and the equipment will only work when the door's closed, the very heavy door is closed, right. so that radiation is trapped within the room and the operation controls are outside the room, so you can only turn the machine on from being outside the room. So it's sort of fail safe. You've done a few minis in your time, haven't you? Well, I it's think... all the same mini. I've only done one mini. Um, X-ray and cars, um, particularly the mini, was um, a painstaking process. Um, I'm not unique in that way. Many artists have a painstaking process. Um, but to create that image of the mini took uh, four people three months. We basically took the car apart, every nut and bolt came apart and we x-rayed every component individually and then we build it back together on the computer. Luckily there's um, a Haynes manual um, which shows you know that the exhaust pipe joins to the engine here and the clutch goes there so we've got this manual which describes what does what. I think you know when I'm creating my work I'm trying to put myself in the position of the collector and if they're going to put that on their wall with their house and they're going to look at it every day of their life that sort of initial sort of impression of wow, isn't it unusual, never seen anything like that before. After a time that will wane. So you've got to keep looking at the picture and discovering new things. And the great thing about technical things like cars is if you're really nerdy, you can keep looking and you can literally find every screw and spring and everything in that car is there. And I think particularly in some of your other works with figures, that's something that I've really enjoyed as well. That process of the more you look, the more you get from it. This is another fantastic example of your figurative work. And so I just want to know how you go about creating these figures. So. Okay, so a lot of radiographers contact me and go, how do you do it? Because um, X-raying people um, basically is dangerous. Um, a radiographer in a hospital will try to avoid X-raying a patient if at all possible. If there's another way of diagnosing that patient, they'll use another, another method rather than X-ray. So when I X-ray the human for skeleton, and then once I've got the skeletal form, I then build outward from there um, and we match the clothes to the position of the skeleton, which is very tricky because that's done in the dark. Um, and then we do the chair and then we do the newspaper. All the separate things um, to give you the perspective of going the right the way through the picture. It's fascinating. And then if we come over here, this is another one of your figurative works, but you've started working here with superheroes, haven't you? So this is obviously Superman it's, and it's, Clark it's, Kent. It's, it's a really good 
move from the previous picture. So the, the, this picture is more recent because when you look at the previous portrait, there that was just a skeleton with clothes on. Here, our superhero actually has muscles because Superman's strong, he's tough. So not only do you have the bones of the skeleton, we have another element, which is the fissure, it's called in the medical profession, which is your muscle tissue around the bones, which really fills out his t-shirt because he's ripping off, Clark Kent is ripping off his shirt He's turned into Superman, and Superman is buff. He's strong. <laughs> he can hold, you know, he can stop steam trains. And how do you go about creating the muscles then? So we x-ray legs of lamb and pork chops and things, and, you know, animal tissue um, wow. from the butchers. And so do you, presumably then, you arrange it not on the bone, but as if there was a bone there, and then x-ray it? Exactly. So a, a leg of lamb would be good for the thigh, but a chicken drumstick is good for the guns. I'm really pleased with this work because um, it's, it's fairly new and the lenticular process really helps tell the story of the transition from one being Clark Kent to the sort of superhero. Um, it's not just a gimmick, it actually helps make the art have more impact. And you've worked with fabrics before, haven't you? Most notably with the V&A. Um, so how did that come about and what was the project? Okay, so um, as you can tell, I'm a, um, you know, a sort of big follower of fashion by, the, by my youth and <laughs> slender figure. Um, but no, I've always been interested in fashion and um, I was lucky enough to be um, introduced to one of the fashion curators at the Victoria and Albert Museum. And I said, I'd love to do a project based around the, the sort of fashion trends of my life. I was born in the 60s, so in my life I've gone through teddy boys, skinheads, soul boys, punk, and I was trying to do a project about recording that, um, but the Victoria and Albert Museum have such a wide and fantastic collection of fashion that they kindly gave me access to the whole collection, so the project sort of mushroomed into something much more sort of glamorous and interesting. Because you ended up working on several exhibitions, didn't you? I remember there's the Balenciaga one, yeah. which was incredible. I remember seeing that, that was really cool. I remember seeing your photo there. It was sort of, I didn't realise until in retrospect, having seen this work, that I had seen it before then. And also, there's another sort of fashion exhibition, and you sort of continually work with the VA, don't you? Yeah, you know, um, it's an amazing museum. Um, it's so wide ranging, um, probably amongst the, probably the best three museums in the world, um, and I think we should support it. Do you have any sort of interesting discoveries as you were uh, x-raying their collection, presumably sort of hidden secrets or things like that? Well, to go back to your example of the Balenciaga dress, um, the reason the Victorian Albert Museum were interested in me x-raying the Balenciaga dress was that he was quite a recluse. Um, unusually, he was a fashion designer and he only ever gave one interview. And in that interview, he said that he defied gravity and made the women look beautiful by tailoring skills. He said he didn't use the supports and weights that the other designers were using, but the x-ray of the dress reveals that in fact he did. There was elastic in it and weights in it and all that. Just, he did use amazing fabrics. Um, so um, there's not that, actually that much to see in a dress when you think about a dress, because you can turn it inside out to see what's on the inside. Um, yeah. But the layering and the texture of the garments in x-ray, it gives it some sort of another sort of level of interest and intrigue. Now, I don't know, are you a car buff? Sort of. Um, the, mo the more exposure I get to the, to the car community, particularly the classic car community, the more I'm sort of interested in, because without me taking pictures of them, they are works of art on their own. I mean, you can't put a car through an x-ray machine, can you? And so how do you go about x-raying something so big? Right, so if we go back to the, to the Mini story, where we, to make that image of the Mini, we basically destroyed a car. We, took every component apart, we cut the side of the uh, car off, took the doors off, totally destroyed it. That car cost me £175 and it was a rust bucket, so it wasn't a problem destroying it, it had come to the end of its life anyway. Yeah. The car we're looking at here, Lamborghini, I guess it's going to be worth plus £150,000, maybe £200,000. It's, it's going up in value. Yeah. So the owners of these cars aren't too keen if I turn up with an angle grinder and a sledgehammer. They would rather I took care with them. So recently there's been a big advance in x-ray technology and there's a machine in Germany that can x-ray up to 3.5 metres in one section. So I use that digital system to x-ray the cars which aren't harmed. I see, okay. But that's not the case with a project I know you did back in 1998. Um, 
a full Boeing 777? The X-ray of the plane was um, a hell of a challenge um, and something I didn't really think that was going to come about. When I was originally thinking about it, I just thought it was technically impossible. I persuaded the, um, the, the commissioning design agency to let me have a go. Um, they gave me the most important thing, which was the introduction to Boeing and persuaded Boeing to send me the parts of the X-ray. And we X-rayed the plane in exactly the same principle of how we X-rayed the Mini. We X-rayed it bit by bit by bit by bit. When you've got a project that runs on for that long, you've really got to have like a vision of what you're trying to get to in the end, because it's easy to get sidetracked, you know, you get someone asks you to do something else in the middle of it, and um, or you decide yourself to do something else in the middle of it, and you end up not finishing it. And um, I think because it was such a lucky break to get access to the parts of the plane, to persuade Boeing to send me bits of a plane, Yeah, I had to find a way to make it happen. You've managed to get your work, I know, into the Tottenham, Tottenham Hotspur training ground as a Spurs fan. That obviously means a lot to me. And Hung Win Son, who is a favourite of mine, but you have met Kate Middleton and... Yeah, so I had, a, I had a large retrospective exhibition at Photographiska, which is the world's biggest photography museum in Stockholm. It's a converted customs building on the harbour in Stockholm. So there were um, about 60 artworks uh, the size of the mini, big, big artworks um, for three months in this museum. And um, over 100,000 people paid to uh, visit my work. But it was one of these things where just through word of mouth, they didn't do any marketing, just through word of mouth. It's just the amount of people that still contact me about that show is amazing. And right at the end, the Royal Family were doing a tour of Scandinavia and I was asked to fly back to give Kate Middleton and Prince William a guided tour, along with the Princess Stephanie and her husband from Sweden. So, wow. Yeah, I had to give them a tour of the show. And yeah, so she's really interesting in photography, Kate. She's, she's, she's obviously got three kids, so she's taken a lot of pictures of her kids, but she was fascinated by the whole technical process where William, not surprisingly, was more interested in the Land Rover. <laughs> 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 well, she does have an art history degree, doesn't she? So she yeah, has that background. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. She was genuinely interested. I was told that I had five minutes with her, and she was with me for 25 minutes. And all the Secret Service people were ushering me towards the door to get her out because she's got another function to go to. And she wasn't having any of it. She was more. She kept asking question after question after question. And you can't refuse a princess. No, of course, <laughs> of course not. Of course not. So this is a slightly different image, I think, to the others that we've been looking at. And so I can't help but notice there's a real photographic quality to this. And so can you just talk me through, well, exactly just why this will change of look, really? So the last superhero we were looking at was a lenticular. And a lenticular, basically, is a lens that's put over two photographs. So you look from one angle, you see one photograph, and from the other angle, you see the next photograph. Here, we're just looking at one image. It's quite a haunting, the film itself is already gritty and dark and sort of um, moody. So we try to pick up on that with the, with the image. We try to make it a bit more sort of analog with the round corners and the film. It's sort of redolent of an X-ray um, that you'd get in the pre-digital days. Like before 2000, when it all started going digital, you used to go to the doctors or the hospital and get an X-ray and you literally have a film. And with the film, they would put your name, your patient's name would all be coded in it. So we've suddenly put those details in with the title of the, of the work and my signature, just as in a patient's details would be recorded in the film. So here it's the different version of the, of the mini image and it's built inside a, like a backlit illuminated light box. The well, good thing about having a light box is that um, it allows the picture to sort of really bring energy into the home, um, particularly at night. Well, Nick, it has been such a pleasure talking to you and getting to know more about this whole collection. It's, yeah, it's been a joy. Not at all. What a great opportunity to tell you about my work and look at this amazing exhibition. Thank you for putting it on. I'm touched. Really, Not really at all. Touched. No, no, no. The pleasure is honestly all ours. And for all of you who have been watching, um, Nick Beasley's work will be available to see on the website. And if you want any more information about the works or the artists, feel free to get in touch with your local Clarendon Gallery and any one of our consultants would be more than happy to help. Thanks so much for listening. And Nick, once again, it's been a pleasure.